Most times, we receive miracles. We desire miracles. But we do not sustain the grace to understand and interpret what those miracles are saying. The first message that comes along with every manifestation of a miracle, a sign, and a wonder is a revelation of the love of Jesus. The love of the Father. The love of Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3. Every time you receive a miracle, be it a breakthrough, a restoration, more than the object you have received, discern the letter that was sent with that miracle. It is the Lord speaking to you that I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. Listen, the first message that the miraculous brings along with that miracle is the message of the love of Jesus. If you do not discern the love of Jesus through miracles, then you have wasted that miracle. You have not maximized the benefit of that miracle. So every time a door opens for you, as an individual, as a ministry, as a business, every time God magnifies you, every time God lifts you, every time the barren rejoice with children, every time the sick are healed, discern that more than the unique miracle, there is a message. Love. Because many times, you see, the devil uses these situations and circumstances to also speak to us. And most times in the midst of pain or sickness or poverty or whatever it is, we come up with all kinds of messages that were fabricated by the pit of hell. Does God really love me? Is it true that God cares about me? Remember, that was what they asked Jesus in the boat. When they were going to the other side, the Bible says he was sleeping. The moment he was walking, you know, the, the um, what do we call it now? The boat started capsizing and it looked like everything was going to turn around. They said, carest thou not that we perish. In other words, where is proof of the love you always talk about? So Jesus got up and had to defend his love. And in defending it, he said, Shalom, be still. Every time a miracle happens to you, do not just embrace the miracle, discern the message. And message number one is regardless of what situations and circumstances attempt to tell you about God, it remains true that God is love and that he loves you with an everlasting love. The consciousness of the love of God will transform your life forever. We live in a world today where love is very scarce. We live in a world today where love is based on merit. But God uses the miraculous to introduce you to a dimension of his love and to remind you again that God is love. What a powerful message. The love of God. The love of Jesus expressed not just through words, but through signs, through wonders, through miracles. When he saw the woman who had suffered with the issue of blood, when that woman got healed, it was a message. It was not just the, an end to a life of hemorrhage. It was a message. I love you and I care about you that much. John chapter 3 and verse 16. A popular scripture that many of us have forgotten. It says, for God so loved the world. He proved that he loved by giving. So on that cross, he was not just a man that was dying. He was using his blood to write a letter. And the letter is that I love you with an everlasting love. Isn't it amazing how many people will say I love you. But when it has to do with now proving it. But he did not just say I love you. He came, went to the cross and whilst his blood was dripping to the earth. It was not weakness. It was the sacrifice of love. I assure you it was not nails that held him to that cross. Mm -mm. He was the one who was holding the nail to walk in the first place. The word that upholds all things by the word of his power. He would have called on a legion. A legion. 
when Lucifer rebelled, it was not even God that fought. It would be an insult for Jesus to have fought. Are we together? Love. The love of Jesus should change you. It should give you confidence. It should let you know that I am the beloved. The beloved. He's not ashamed to declare his vulnerability towards the saints. This is why he seeks for every opportunity to reveal his... Listen, when you know the love of God, then it kills fear. Because perfect love has a very unique quality that it has a defense system against fear. There is something about not knowing the love of a man or the love of God. Are we together? Yes. I returned this afternoon and um, one of my little daughters, as soon as she saw me, I was having a haircut and she didn't even mind. As soon as she, show, she shouted, Daddy, and came with joy. And the barber had to wait patiently. Even me, I had to wait. Without asking for any permission, without saying, are you tired? She just jumped on me with joy. Perfect love cast out fear. Every time there is restraint to your advancement, there is something about the love of God you do not know. The love of God is powerful. It's not some feminist emotional thing. There is energy. There is power in the recognition of the love of God towards you. Hallelujah. For there is jealousy attached with true love. Every dimension of true love has a jealousy component. The jealousy dimension of love is what energizes defending it. When you touch someone's child, for instance, it is that jealousy component that will make the, the man say, ah, why are you touching my child? There is a jealousy component. So when God says, I love you, that means there is a dimension of jealousy he has for you. So when Satan buffets you and attempts to write something that is not him, there is an eagerness in him to correct it. I want you to understand that before you got here, the Spirit of God was already here. You are not the one trying to beg and say, Lord, look down on us. There is an eagerness. It's not your ego that is at stake. It's his own reputation that is at stake. If he leaves you the way you came, then you have a justification to say, Lord, but you said you love me. The revelation of the love of God. Don't take lightly. What I share with you, these are very simple but deep spiritual truths, discerning the miraculous. The day I came to terms with the fact that God loved me so lavishly, he gave me a revelation that made me believe that out of everyone in the world, I had a unique place in his heart. And I really, really believe it. I have seen God do things that only lovers do. What God has done in my life, gods don't do it. Only lovers do. Listen to me. Carry that consciousness. I will reign in life because the creator of the ends of the earth loves me. Hmm. Hmm. You remain on top because the love of Jesus do you know the Bible says, Behold what manner, what manner of love the Father had bestowed towards us. The love of Jesus. Very quickly, number two. What is the second message that we find in miracles, signs and wonders? The revelation of the might of and the power of God. It is important that we understand that in as much as God is love, 
He is all powerful. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. It says, God had spoken wise. Twice have I heard that power, some versions say all power belongs to the Lord. Say that after me. All power belongs to the Lord. One more time. Say it. All power. Yes, sir. Not some. If God has some power, then whoever gave it to him, he must worship that person. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. One of the reasons why we worship is because of the awareness of a need or incompleteness. One of, among the many elements that sponsor worship is the awareness that you are not completing yourself. So it makes you to acknowledge the one who completes you. So if ever God is not complete, then he owes whoever completes him worship. Are we together? The might and the power. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all, above sickness, above defeat, above failure, above limitations. Please believe this. Believe this. Number one, believe that Christ is exalted above all these things. Number two, believe that now in him and with him you are exalted also. That's what the Bible tells us. Paul was teaching us that we have been raised up with Christ. Believe this. Exalted far above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, every name that is named, not only in this age, but even that which is to come. He's exalted above all. This is the reason why when we command in his name and as touching that authority, the only thing that should not answer is what is above him. You see that? You see, according to the law of ranking in military, nobody who is lower than the person who is giving a command dares to ask questions. The moment a decree is given, the only person who sustains the ability to object is an officer who is higher than the person who gave the command. This is why he gave us his name. And he didn't give us his name before he died. Because if he gave us his name before he died, he was not yet, he had not yet gotten the keys. Satan was still the God of this world. If he gave us his name before he died. The authority that he used to walk on earth with was the authority that the spirit of God brought for him. That's why he had to wait for the Holy Ghost to function. When he resurrected, there is no mention of the Holy Ghost back in him. No, all authority. Now, this is Jesus. That resurrected Christ, he now gave us his name like we have taught here. So when we make decrees, I want you to understand why when we speak, God begins to honor. It's not just because a man is anointed. It's because according to that law of ranking, when we speak and we make decrees, there is a law in the spirit that even God honors, demons honor, Satan honors. So everything that is truly below that name must answer. Ordinarily speaking, it shouldn't answer to you because you are created, except for the fact that you are not the one speaking. When you speak, if you understand what you are saying, the realm of the spirit does not see you. It sees the office, not the person. So in reality, it's not just the individual. The might of God. Let me tell you something. God is a mighty God. That means it is within his power to turn your life around. Some of you may not be needing healing. But you are at points in your life where you need to see the outstretched arm. Can I tell you this? I will continue to encourage the body of Christ. That whilst it is true that we do not seek God just for things. 
Our love for him is not predicated on what we get. However, in his love and in his benevolence, he has left us a testament backed with his integrity that no one seeks him and goes empty-handed. There are blessings. The Bible calls them benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and in blessing him, do not forget that he's not a selfish God. Remember his benefits. And he lists the benefits. God is a mighty God. That's why we have the confidence that he can turn our lives around. We believe that he's a mighty God. Someone say he's a mighty God. Prophesy to your life over your situation, he is a mighty God. Yes, sir. All power belongs to him. So when he says, it is your season of victory, when he says, it is your season of lifting, forget about what was said. Focus on the one who said it first. Is he worth your believing? Are we together? If I tell you to collect 1,000 Naira or 10,000 Naira from me after service, forget about what I said. Focus on the person who said it. Does he have the ability to give you 10,000 now? <laughs> ah, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence. So help comes. Help does not just appear. There is a location where help resides. It says, my help cometh, just like faith cometh. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And I've said it here that it's not only heaven and earth he makes. He also makes men. He also makes destinies. The maker of the heaven and the earth, the maker of destinies, the one who can pick an ordinary person from anywhere regardless the background and lift you. Listen, don't be left behind. God is shifting people into levels and dimensions in destiny. Don't sit down arguing and wondering, can God make a way in the wilderness? Don't sit down and say, I come from a village. I am not as educated as I would have wanted to be. I cannot even speak English well. We are talking about the creator of the ends of the earth. The maker. It's a name and an attribute of God that very few people understand. To make means to combine the right ingredients and produce a definite outcome. Make rice for me. You go to the market and source for everything that you use to make quality rice. Are we together? Alongside the sense to combine them. You can buy the ingredients and not have the intelligence to combine them. You will still not make that thing. So when you call God the maker, that means he knows that for you to rise, you need prosperity, you need health, you need influence. Someone from Lagos needs to know you. Someone from London needs to know you. And like a, like a woman goes to the market to shop, he will go around by his spirit, shop for people and things. Bring them together to your life. This is what Paul was trying to say, that God is able to make all grace abound. Don't forget this example. The might of God. The one who is mighty is not just the one who does mighty things. But the one who can look for the ingredients. Listen, those of you who have vehicles. How many of you know that there are vehicles we hardly buy? Not just because they are expensive, but they are parts. They are rare. It's easy to, it's difficult to look for the parts. Today you can't just get up and go and buy a plane and say, give me a plane. No, they have to vet you. Who are you? How did you make your money? You can't go and buy weapons today. No, you must receive a letter from a government backing you. On what grounds and what would you use it for? What is the legal backing? If your weapons are found with a terrorist, what should be done to you? So when the Bible says he's the maker, that means there are many people who try, but their strength cannot reach your destiny helper. Their strength cannot restore all of the ingredients that must be coordinated in your life for your life to speak his praise. God is able to make. Mm. It's one thing for God to take you somewhere, but it's one thing for God to bring that somewhere to you. 
Gentiles, your Bible says, shall come. There are times he will take you before kings. But there are times Gentiles will come to your light. And they are kings. These are the attributes that makes him mighty. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. It's the Lord. This is the God that we serve. So when he moves mightily, listen, it's one thing for God to do signs and wonders, but it's another thing for him to make you. You become a living wonder. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. Please believe this. So that whilst we are praying, you will remember again what God told you. That you may be small now, but I will lift you among your family members and put you in a position of grace. And then the devil tries to tell you, you, where did he leave all the people there? Then you just remember that the person talking is the maker. The maker. We're used to men making promises and failing. I will give you a job, they say. And by next week, they've been sacked out of that position. Because even though they were occupying that position as managers, there was an authority above them. You only become afraid of what God has said if there's someone higher than him. Because the person higher than him can stop him from doing it. But he swore, he searched if there was one greater. And not finding any, he swore by his name that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. Please hear me. From any level and at any dimension in life, this God, this mysterious God is able to pick you from where you are and lift you beyond your wildest imagination. Please hear me, my dear people. Do not allow society bully you with their sense of mediocrity. Everyone was created. No matter the color of your skin, the mat, no matter what region, you are still a creature. The only person that you truly owe that fear and reverence is the one who created, who can change times. And if he has decided to tell you that this is your season, then believe it. Believe it. Don't believe that rubbish. I can't be lifted in Zaria. I can't prosper. I can't see the outstretched arm of God. Remember what I told you. It is not always that God takes you to the place of the blessing. There are times he takes the blessing and looks for you. Where are you? He will search for you. Let me give you an example. When Jesus was born, they didn't carry a baby looking for the Magi. Uh -uh. The Magi left their place of honor and they were searching around. They never said this place is uncomfortable. Uh -uh. Not when there is grace there. This is our vain search for greener pastures will only frustrate us for nothing. Greener pastures is where his word is. Where his word is. The sent word. Are you learning something tonight? So signs and wonders reveal to you that God is mighty. He's mighty. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you are the king, there is none other. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Yes, Lord, you are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I wrote this song many years ago as a revelation of the depth of the comprehension of the might of God. It was a revelation that he brought to my life. Like Bishop Oyedepo would say, I didn't just see him high and lifted up alone. I saw myself too. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. He says, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. I said, this is it. So every time I sing about him being highly lifted, first I take out time to worship him. But while I'm worshiping him, I know that I'm rising to seated with him. When you know this, you will refuse to allow situations and circumstances to defeat you and make it look like the walk on the cross was a, a, just some Christian fables. No, no. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power, not just the message, the power. There is power in that revelation. Hallelujah. So you know that you are not ordinary. This is not some Pentecostal talk. Uh -uh. The only part of the hands you can see is the one that is physical. But that's not all there is. There is more to it. The only part of a life you can see is the one that is visible. It is not only what is visible that is really alone. Just because something is invisible does not mean it is unreal. And the prophet said, open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw chariots, chariots, that you will see the backing of heaven that supports you, that you will see the favor of God, that you will see the spiritual arsenals that are, are around your life, determined to see that your destiny becomes a praise. Then fear dies. It dies a natural death. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I declare that the mighty God is at work in my life revealing his glory revealing his power in my life listen expect your life to be supernatural listen to what I'm teaching you you will never truly bring glory to God if your life is ordinary this is not just some Pentecostal talk the only way men pay attention is when there is a supernatural dimension of anything. You are in ministry here. Trust God for grace. 